I love the show. Uh, it's very well run. These uh, keynotes have been great. Uh, it's actually my third octane. And uh, all the sessions are, are always so informative. And then I always go back home full of ideas. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm hoping to inspire here today uh, with this conversation, talking about the art of workforce productivity in the extended enterprise. And I'll explain what that means as we go along. Um, I think I'm supposed to show this very important disclaimer. Uh, I'm not going to read it. Probably you won't either. <laughs> That's OK. All right, uh, before I get into um, who Fuse is, um, continuing on from my previous thought about ideas, um, the kind of genesis of this, com this conversation we're having today was um, this I think problem, or challenge we'll call it, um, that I don't know that there's a solution for. And for all of you IT admins and software developers, you're probably salivating now, I know, because you can't have a problem that you can't solve or that you haven't solved. And so keep that in the back of your mind, keep that uh, spirit as uh, we start discussing our main topic. So before we get into that, um, Fuse connects to digital workforce. So we are a cloud communications company. I'm going to skip over two slides. Come on. Um, founded in 2006. Um, we have 700 employees, 1,700 customers worldwide. We do about 40% of our business overseas. We do the voice, the video, the messaging, all on one platform, all on one app. Um, so your users don't have to switch between apps. And as administrators, it's one platform to manage. Um, which, of course, makes your job a lot easier. <clears throat> so we're here to talk about the extended enterprise. And what's interesting for Fuse and, and what's relevant is that really your communication system is the olive branch that extends the enterprise. In the old days, I say old, not that long ago, um, that was really a phone call, right? You got to talk to a vendor, you got to talk to a customer, you pick up the phone. Um, fast forward a little bit, we do uh, audio conferences, we do these great video conferences now. All those things have one thing in common is that they're very transactional, right? We have a conversation, we talk about something, it ends. It might be recorded, um, and that may live on, but the, that conversation really ends. Well, we're now entering a world where we're starting to bring people from the outside into the walls of our company. So whatever communication system you use, uh, it may have a, a guest feature, channel guest, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so we've got these semi-permanent groups that are forming there. And we don't really have fantastic control, I'll say, of, of those groups because it's, it's kind of viral, right? I'm going to invite my contractor that I'm working with into my chat group. and that contractor is going to be there for the life of the chat group until somebody remembers, oh, we don't work with that person anymore. We better shut them off. And so the, the thing I keep thinking about is, while we have made some really great tools for administering that, wouldn't it be great if it, we extended it out to Okta and to put that in with your central identity management? So that's kind of the thing that uh, I'm, I'm uh, going to challenge you, to, you guys to think about a little bit. I have this thing. Oh, all right, so um, at Fuse, we do an awful lot of research uh, around the enterprise and communications, and uh, we see some stats here about, uh, about the extended enterprise. Uh, but before I jump in, before I introduce my panel, I uh, just want a quick show of hands. Who is using uh, extended teams, guests, channel guests, whatever you want to call them? Quick show of hands, you guys. All right. Um, is, Anybody concerned about some of these challenges about managing the IT infrastructure? Uh, or the, uh, sorry, the, the identity um, of these guests? Quick show of hands again. Yeah, yeah. So a common problem and uh, something that, like I said, I hope that together we sort of explore the problem space a little bit and talk about maybe some solutions. Um, and with that, I will invite my esteemed panel up on stage. All right, we got a couple of mics there. You guys are good to go. 
Okay. Mason, you're first. You've got a mic in your hand. Test, test. Hey. <laughs> uh, why don't you tell us who you are, who you work for, and just a little bit about your experience with uh, the Extended Enterprise. Hey, uh, I'm Mason Spencer. I work for Career Builder. Um, I've been there for a little over three years. We've been using Fuse and Okta in conjunction to accelerate our business uh, for longer than that. Um, and yeah, I've got concerns around, you know, bringing in Fuse uh, with guest collaborators, Slack, all these new tools where we're bringing people, not even contractors or interns, just other people outside of our org in. And I have no oversight to license management um, as well as any other administration functions there. Um, and they kind of lose sight when it comes to audits or anything like that. Yeah. Great. Alex? Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Alex Perlovich. Um, I'm from a company called PaySafe, which is a fintech company. We're a global company, uh, about 3,000 some users. We have all the challenges that I think pretty much everyone has experienced, M&As, mergers, different companies, different technologies, contractors, guests, third-party vendors, you know, you name it, right? Um, it's just kind of what, you know, what the normal business now is. Um, you know, we started some of this, you know, path, journey, whatever cliche you want to call it at this point, um, you know, many years ago already. So we've been in Okta for about four years. Um, we've been on a unified messaging platform for about three as well. Um, and, you know, some of the big challenges is how do you secure that data? How do you, how do you make it easy enough so that you don't start creating a shadow IT environment that starts sprout, spawning everywhere, which a lot of companies are, um, and how do you provide the tools um, so that you can sort of secure that and have one platform um, to meet those needs and make it easy enough to, um, to not do that. Great, Michelle? Hi, good afternoon. I'm Michelle Bushman with American Pacific Mortgage. Um, at American Pacific Mortgage, I act as the um, CIO, CTO, and CISO. And we are a top 15 um, independent mortgage bank, about 2,200 employees. Um, obviously, we have a lot of regulation around securing our data. Um, in our organization, we leverage a lot of managed service partners, um, as well as contractors that extend our enterprise. Additionally, because we are so widely distributed with about 200 branches, um, we have a lot of remote offices. And we've also been under a big push to reduce our brick and mortar from an office perspective and pushing people more to be teleworkers. Um, and so uh, we've been an Okta client for about three years, and we have, um, we are almost on our first year in, uh, with Fuse. Um, and the abilities that uh, the platform gives us um, have been huge from an efficiency perspective, but it also does start to raise those questions as we start to share out the application to our contractors and um, temporary folks, um, as well as our managed services partners. How do we manage the life cycle of those users? Um, how do we make sure that they're being removed when they're no longer working with us? Um, there's a lot of things um, in particular that, you know, that, the, that creates challenges for us from a security perspective as we you know, become more um, extended outside of our walls. Great, Brent? Good afternoon, I'm Brent Arrington. I'm an architect uh, with Okta on the professional services team. Um, since we're all at Okta, and I won't waste your time telling you what Okta is, I assume <laughs> you know. Um, I, I've been with Okta for a little over six years, uh, so I've had a chance to see uh, a lot of different customers, a lot of different uh, integrations, um, and I've had a chance to see the product grow uh, quite a bit as well. Um, so hopefully I can help maybe bring a few insights into how to make your integrations a little easier. Great, thank you. All right, let's jump right into it. Um, talking a bit about the guest policy. So we did a show of hands earlier, um, and I saw some of your hands up, so I already know the answer a little bit. Uh, but wanted to dive in a bit more. So um, Michelle, tell us a little bit about, um, well, one, you do allow external guests, I believe. We talked about this earlier. Mm -hmm. um, how are you currently managing that? And when, kind of what's your policy around this? Yeah, so it was funny, you know, when we started having these conversations in preparation for today, it actually spurred a lot of questions um, around what additional policies we actually might need to implement in our organization now that we do have the ability to share out guest access to our Fuse platform. Um, we definitely have been using it in a very limited basis. Um, where we're finding the most value right now out of that is extending it out to our managed services partners. So, for example, we use a, a managed security services 
partner, and there's a lot of um, back and forth that we do. We have weekly threat indication reports, but there's a lot of communication that can be handled through chat. Um, we do our weekly calls through the Fuse platform, and it's actually been really helpful because now we have one location, actually, where all that information, file share, everything resides, um, but it does add that additional challenge around what happens, um, you know, when somebody leaves off of the team or when they, um, you know, when we have new people join, how do we manage the moderation of those groups? So what we've pretty much done is, is assign a, the, the moderator of the group to own that right now, um, but are very interested in seeing how we can leverage some of the provisioning capabilities through Okta and Fuse to be able to help manage that. That's great. Alex. Um, so yeah, I mean, we definitely allow, I think most companies have to allow at this point. Um, you know, I think some of our concerns before we went to Okta, before we went to Fuse, um, was these other departments, it, it doesn't take much now for somebody to go bring up a Slack uh, app, right? It doesn't take much for somebody to go do a Dropbox or Box, and you know, nothing against it. We're, we still use Box, and you know, we have some other platforms. Um, they have their value, but you don't actually need IT anymore. Right? You can go ahead and start all that, and then you're, you're left out. All that data, all the visibility, you lose that. Um, and it's important because there's, there's things for compliance and audits and things like that as well. And at the same time, you got to look back and say, why did my organization do that? Is it because IT is not moving fast enough? Is it because maybe our policies are so uh, not out, maybe outdated or just so much bureaucracy that it actually puts... Um, this thing where it says, well, you know, IT can't spin this up fast enough, so then I'm just going to go do something myself. I'll put it on a company credit card, and then no one will ever see it or talk about it. So, you know, one of the big things is obviously, you know, having a centralized, you know, identity management like Okta to really help streamline where all the accounts are created, to give products that are easy to use, right? I mean, everyone's you know, from InfoSec says, hey, if you want to transfer files, use this tool, it's 50 clicks, it's, you know, three different phones you got to do, or, you know, passwords are 15 complex. You know, no one's going to do that. No, no vendor's going to do that unless they really have to. And, you know, you hear over and over again from all these conferences where, you know, users just bypass that, right? It makes it less secure, right? They'll write it on a keyboard. They'll put it somewhere underneath. They'll, they'll share it because they don't want to do it anymore. Um, so there's all this stuff. So I think simplif simplifying the tools that are used, um, giving a platform where it's easy to share and it's comparable to other leading products is, you know, really important. And Mason, I think that Tree Builder is not currently using Guess. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, not with Fuse, but uh, we do have this problem with other applications. Um, I've noticed a lot of times uh, this new paradigm kind of spinning up of ad hoc collaboration groups. Uh, so whether it be Slack, uh, Zoom, hopefully soon Fuse with Guest, um, and whatever other service, uh, just to get one project done, especially us being entirely a technology company, uh, someone might work with six to seven other vendors, um, and those vendors are only managed within each application, right? Say within Zoom or within Fuse or within whatever application. We don't see those identities because these people aren't really part of our organization, but that collaboration or that ad hoc collaboration group still forms and needs access to several services from our company uh, to help us accomplish a goal. Great. Brent, I'd love to hear your take from Okta. Um, you know, I know you work with customers that use these types of features, but also you have a, a unique perspective on um, how we could work with Okta to kind of manage these things. Right. So, uh, you know, being the Okta guy, it's probably not surprising that my, my point of view would be, yes, absolutely, you want to have everyone, all of your identities in Okta. <laughs> but, um, but no, I mean, I, I think, and probably you guys would agree with that in an ideal world, right? Like, you would love to have that level of knowledge of everyone who has access to your systems and, and that level of control. Um, but it's, it's not easy. It's, it's sometimes hard to get uh, all of those different groups consolidated into, into Okta. Um, it, it coming from the PS side, um, you know, traditionally we've, we've done a lot of work with customers where we've had to do some customization and uh, do some pretty heavy building uh, with Okta APIs to uh, enable some of the things that, um, that would make that, uh, that sort of management of, of external identities a little easier. Um, I think with some of the announcements that we that we've had here this week, um, that's getting a lot easier now. And the, the the hooks uh, that we are now exposing through our uh, different uh, event endpoints are going to make 
some of this onboarding process uh, a little easier. I, I can see the self-service um, capabilities of Okta, uh, you know, talking about guests, I, like the capabilities we have now with uh, some of the workflow stuff and the progressive um, profiling uh, and the hooks, I think that, that'll make it a lot easier to build uh, custom self-service features where you can get these external identities into your, your identity system um, without a lot of, of manual management on the admin side and, and have a way to then get the, that control over those identities. Who has access to what, when to turn it off, the audit trail of who's accessing what, et cetera. Great. So, I mean, we've kind of started to get into this already. Um, it sounds like we're all in agreement that external guests should tie into our central identity strategy. Um, how do you see that working? We'll start with Mason. Um, you know, so far when it was just one application here or there that they needed, I was fine with letting that application manage the identity. But now that they're going across applications and they're needing two to three company resources, uh, there, there's a dire need to get that tied into a central identity management solution. Right. Alex? Yeah, I mean, definitely that's the ideal world that you want something like that. And, you know, the big thing is um, if somebody goes off and they add these external users, right, um, and those external users have left or their contracts have ended, they still technically will have rights to those files and those systems and, you again, lose your visibility, right? So the more you can centralize it, the more you can give a kind of one source of truth um, for that is, I mean, it, it's difficult, but it makes a, you know, a lot of stuff easier. And that's obviously why, you know, you guys are here for Okta, so you can integrate that and then, you know, Ideally, it would be, you know, if you want to look at the end state or try to go as much end as possible, um, you know, easy sign up for your own internal applications, but for external users, and then have that visibility and have that oversight so you know that you can disable accounts, you can, you know, if they're inactive and things like that. Uh, you know, speaking off of what Alex said, for me, it's, it's the visibility, right? Um, when you have folks signing up and using some of these um, other assets that you don't have visibility into, to know that those accounts exist um, creates a lot of risk. Uh, so definitely being able to connect those and have a really good central source of visibility is critical in managing the life cycle of those accounts. Um, and, you know, additionally to that, it has to be easy. You know, when we talk about technology today, if there's a barrier to doing that, to, to giving the business the freedom to be able to share those things, but it creates, you know, 10 extra steps, um, they're going to go bypass it. So, you know, it has to be simple. It has to be integrated into the existing process. Um, and you have to have some visibility so that, you know, you, um, you know, digital identity is, is dangerous today, right? With all these folks, you know, when people used to be face-to-face, -face, you know who they are, but now we have people who potentially are coming into our assets that we think we know who they are, um, but there needs to be that additional sense of, of validating that identity to know that you don't have some sort of breach. Yeah, I, I think the key there is, you know, so I think we all agree that we, sh we should be striving for this. It's how do you make that happen and how do you make it easy, to your point. Um, and I think really there are there's sort of two categories of, of barriers that we want to try and break down. One is on the end user, obviously. You want to make it as easy as possible for them to start collaborating and be productive. Uh, you, you also want to avoid any undue burden on your admins as well, on the IT staff. Um, you know, having seen a lot of different implementations, I, one thing I can say for sure is there is no one right answer. The, the, how, how you do this is going to depend upon your unique situation. The, you know, the specifics of your company, what your external users look like, how many of them are they, where are they coming from, that sort of thing. So there could be a, a range of possible solutions, everything from, you know, manually putting users in Okta if you only have a handful of them to having uh, spreadsheets that you manage and use CSV as a master in Okta to bring them in and manage them that way, all the way to building, uh, you know, customized self-registration solutions, which Fortunately, are now I think getting uh, going to be easier uh, to, to do. But um, you know, the, the the exact solution is, is not going to be the same for everyone. It's going to depend on your unique situation and, and basically finding the balance between um, you know the, the the work the effort they have to put in up front to build a solution and then the the I guess the pain that it's easing that that solution is easing off of your shoulders. So we talked a little bit about 
um, making it easy for the end users and self-registration flows and so on. But Brent, you touched upon not making it a burden for your admin. Um, what, what kinds of controls do the admins need? Um, you know, we, we've, we see a number of different controls um, in the Fuse platform and others um, for these guests. Um, you know, as simple as I can find all my guests and go and shut them off if, if we're done doing business with them, um, to, you know, timed or expiring kind of guest accounts. Um, what about things like we're no longer doing business with this entire contractor, contracting company, you know, should, should we be able, be able to shut off PwC? Um, what, kind, what kinds of controls do you see um, being needed at the admin level? Yeah, I, I mean, I think all of those make sense potentially on a on a case by case basis, and there there can be different ways to achieve those things. Like, uh, you know, being able to identify specific populations of users, whether it's by group membership, if you have them in Octa, or by attribute values and creating group rules, or uh, creating lifecycle events based on you know, how, like how long has it been since these people have logged in? Do we want to just clean up these accounts um, to you know, you mentioned partners that you're no longer wor working with. If you're doing inbound federation from a particular partner, you know, turn off that inbound federation if you're not working with them anymore, that sort of thing. Um, so, uh, again, um, the, the, specific, the exact answer is going to vary depending on your, your unique situation, but there are, um, you know, I think there are some good options for finding, uh, you know, solutions that are manageable and, and give you the, the control that you need. Sure. Michelle, you've been doing some thinking about this. Um, what kind of controls are you looking for in, as, as an admin um, having to deal with this? Yeah, um, automation. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> automation, as much as we can automate, right, as possible. Um, again, you know, I, I deal with a pretty small IT staff. Um, so when we're looking for solutions, you know, we're always looking for platform-driven solutions. Um, so I don't have a lot of integration points across multiple systems. Um, and those central panels, so there's the visibility and the controls that you need. Um, but, you know, being able to, you know, to your point, you know, based on um, the, the groups that you put them in or um, attributes of, you know, basically being able to... to um, almost kind of build a rule on the flies, you know, as I'm just thinking here to say, okay, everyone from this group and this company or, you know, with this attribute, go remove them yep. um, and just have it run and, and do that for you. I think you need that type of flexibility because it's really going to be dependent upon how your um, identity, you know, access structure is built. Um, so I, I would agree there's not one, a one all, you know, fit solution. Um, but, you know, giving us the capabilities to, um, you know, be able to do that um, at a high level, as I mentioned, you know, build our own little query or rule and say, okay, now, now that you've got all these people, go do this to them. Great. So. Um, oh, oh. Actually, go ahead. I, I did have a few comments. Yeah, on. please. Number one right now, how I do it is I go to each application, uh, sort by last used. Anyone over three months, they get deactivated. Right, I'm hoping that my internal guys are <laughs> still going to be reactivated upon login. Um, not the best way to do it, going to each app. Um, but then the other point there is I need self-service. Um, this identity doesn't come from HR. This isn't part of the enterprise. I need it spun up and spun down by the end user in my org that wanted this to begin with. Yeah, that's a great point. I, I would love if it had a little more self-service uh, specifically for that part of it, right? So you're going to enable a tool that you consider internal, right? Um, Fuse, Slack, whatever, uh, through Okta, but, you know, IT maybe doesn't know about it, right? HR doesn't know about it because this is a contract outside of HR. Uh, it would be great for whoever set that up or some checkbox that says after, you know, a month, go ahead and, you know, send an approval email. Those things are all, you know, it would be really nice to see and then just have that more, like Michelle mentioned, automated, right? So you're not, you're not just, oh, I have to go back every few months, right? It's yeah. just, hey, here's an email, here's a notification, this is how I'm going to do it. Great. And that kind of gets into um, some of our policies for these guests in particular, but I mean, generally for departed employees, I'm always interested to hear. Um, what are your retention policies? Like, do you just expect that this stuff disappears? Or, and, and in particular with guests, right? Like, they've, they've contributed, they're, we're going to remove them at some point. Um, you know, what are you thinking about that? Maybe Mason will start with you. That's a great question. 
That's what I'm thinking about. That we have no policies. Uh, if someone complains, we go, you know, restore the account. Otherwise, you know, we, we hope for the best. Um, and it's not a good way to go about business. Great. Alex? Yeah, I mean, it, it's difficult. I mean, I think everyone has some sort of data governance and some sort of data policies for, you know, here's your email, here's your HR system, here's your finance system. But, you know, if someone puts a chat message, uh, that may be out of it. What about all those other ones? So, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I necessarily have the answers either. I know our companies are constantly working on policies and what do we retain or not. Um, I know some of the start of it is to consolidate as much as possible so you can have, you know, one or, you know, a few kind of best of breed platforms where you can kind of go back and look. And at the same time, if you're insuring, um, you know, when employees leave or whatnot, um, to have something in place that says that data if they worked on some project, needs to go somewhere. Um, you know, some things we also try is, you know, to link some of these applications like Fuse and Okta with other third party, it's something like Box, right, where you can have more data governance and retention, and then that's where it kind of stays in there. So this one's a fun one. <laughs> Working, you know, in a regulated environment, we have regulations that, um, you know, that we have to actually manage around obviously securing consumer information, but also retaining it um, as it has to do with loan manufacturing. Then you have obviously your finance folks that have different regulations around IRS. So we have a pretty robust data retention policy, um, but but where you start to run into that issue is in some of these newer solutions that are out there. Um, when we were talking about this, you know, we, uh, when we were rolling out Fuse, in fact, we had to make a policy basically stating that if you're talking about a loan transaction, that information needs to reside within the actual loan file itself so that it can be retained per our regulatory guidelines. So um, it's a very interesting challenge because there's not necessarily any technical controls that I can put into place to say, oh, you're talking about a loan. You're not allowed to put it in the chat message, right? Um, so, you know, we've obviously had to train our, our end customers, our, our users, um, to make sure that they're using the right tool for transactions. Um, and, and then, of course, you always have there's the litigation piece, right? What do you keep, what you don't? Especially if you're thinking about that you're, um, you know, have a guest with a vendor. Let's say it goes south, right? You know, what do you keep, what don't you keep? Um, so it's an ongoing conversation that we have. Um, we definitely have some pretty straightforward policies, you know, based on our regulatory requirements. Um, but the other challenge I have is with your shadow IT. Um, the things that I don't have visibility to that I should be retaining and managing. Um, and then we do have, you know, from a, a when an employee departs, we have a, a very well-rounded process for that um, around maintaining their data. Again, because of our industry and what we're doing, there's a lot of stuff that we do need to retain um, in the event we ever had an issue with either a consumer loan or an employee issue. Um, but, you know, the, the you know, new age does um, pose a lot of challenges for that. Brent. Yeah, so uh, from an Octa perspective, this is something that's unfortunately historically kind of been out of scope uh, for the most part for Octa. We, we just haven't really had a lot of uh, implementations that really dealt with data retention on the downstream applications, with some exceptions. Um, but uh, from like being an old nerd, um, I, I'm really excited to see you know what possibilities are now going to be opened up with the hooks that we can build into those provisioning and deprovisioning flows, so we can. You know, we now have a much easier way to actually build in some of this custom logic uh, right into the, the provisioning flows that they're already built into, um, into Okta integration. So I think this is something that's going to be, uh, I would expect, more and more common in, in the uh, engagements that we see. Yeah, I think that's going to be um, super powerful. Uh, I can definitely imagine, like, during a deprovisioning flow, we'll take all that user's data and, and put it into, you know, our vault that's on Box or something else. Right. Um, so I'm kind of yeah, and about that. you know we had you know your traditional model if it's an employee on prem or remote you have a contractor usually you'd give them equipment and you can manage that right you're going to get the equipment back you're going to do that but that's not what people do anymore right um, you hear about all the zero trust and you have mobile devices and you have third parties who bring in their own equipment or BYOD and you lose all that right you're not going to get those devices back that information's there. You may or may not force MDM on them. Not everybody does that, again. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be something. Um. So we, um, 
couple slides ago we were talking about the admin controls and you know kind of hearing that there's um, some different thoughts on what, what, we might, we, what we might want to do, but I'm really interested in what are you doing today? Um, so Fuse in particular, like I said, we do have some of those controls, uh, both um, the, the group moderator could be the person responsible for it, or from the admin side, you know, on a regular basis going and seeing who are my guests in my enterprise and should they still be there? Um, but that's really um, leaving it up to those users to do the right thing, and so, how do, we, how do we ensure that that's actually happening? And um, how, how are you dealing with that today? Michelle, you want to start? Sure. So this is one of the biggest challenges for us in our organization. <laughs> um, you know, one of the reasons we, um, we actually selected Okta as our you know, identity access management solution was the ability to connect accounts uh, for single sign-on, to actually be able to take advantage of the provisioning product as they've you know, um, built it out. Um, you know, right now, basically the best way that we have of doing this really is is in auditing items, right? So, you know, we do put all of our users in our Active Directory account, and they actually do get an Okta account as well today. Um, and so we're able to create reports and manage, you know, we have a few tools that we put on there to be watching for weird activities, inactivity. Um, we're still a bit immature, I would say, you know, from a, a maturity perspective in our IT practices around onboarding and offboarding, and it's been a huge focus area um, that you know, we're working on this year, in fact, um, and trying to take advantage of some more of this auto-provisioning. You know, our, our customers you know, and our um, in employees probably have 20 different applications that they use. Um, of being able to tie all those together and make sure um, that we have that central source of truth to know when someone needs to have the application or not, if they need it anymore or not, and then when they're terminated to make sure everything has been um, removed. And it, it is a huge challenge um, for us, particularly as we grew significantly in a very short amount of time with the number of users we're trying to manage without a lot of automation. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't know if anybody's got this down perfect, um, but, you know, we have, we have a great vision that we're trying to execute using the technologies that are available to us um, and maybe potentially some of the development capabilities that we'll now have also with Okta because one of our challenges is that we're, you know, in that mortgage banking world is there's a lot of our applications that aren't available, um, you know, with a SAML 2.0 or, or through Okta's catalog, um, which makes it a little bit more difficult. So, uh, but yeah, it's a challenge, and it, I obviously would love to hear what other people are doing. <laughs> Before we, we move on, so you talked about um, the lifecycle management of your employees, but what about the guests? So you are using the guest feature. Yeah. Um, who's, who's policing that? Yeah, so we've just barely started using the guest features within our Fuse um, application, and right now it's been pretty much restricted to IT, um, and probably me. <laughs> 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 uh, so like I said, we've really just started with our managed security services partner. Um, and working through that and you know obviously we're going to have to create some visibility there because those folks don't necessarily have an account with us in Active Directory. So these are the areas like I said you know at least in the short term we're trying to have the moderator manage the group um, but we need to come up with a better way of actually inventorying that, um, seeing when somebody was last in there and then actually being able to validate their identity and that's where I'm hoping Okta can help us. Well why don't we go to Brent? <laughs> Uh, yeah, what she said. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I mean, again, like, uh, you know, like I said, I think we've been somewhat limited in, in some of the things that we can do out of the box from a, from a uh, lifecycle management perspective, pretty much just CRUD operations, um, unless you want to really pay PS a lot of money and, and have us build something from scratch, which I'm happy to do. But, um, but no, I, I, I think the, the kind of opening up Okta and creating more of a platform um, that you can extend and customize is, is something that's going to really uh, add a lot of value, hopefully, for our customers and, and you know, enable you to do a lot of uh, interesting and, and useful things for your, for your enterprise. Okay. Alex? You know, I, I think it, it kind of echoes all that, right? Um, there's no, you know, we don't really necessarily have a lot of automated tools and you know we're, we're trying to strive for that and try to go to that and obviously some of the new features we're really hoping to kind of start using and getting more visibility in it I think you, you have to change your mentality too to have a continuous um, you know no one's gonna like it but like a continuous audit mentality right just like you would with CI or CD right where people started changing their mentality it's not because my PCI or SOX compliance says every quarter 
uh, maybe I got to do it every month now. Maybe I need to write reports that actually alert when there are in active accounts so that when those audits come up, it's not this huge lift from all these different parties. So we've been really trying to push a lot of, um, a lot of that and kind of just always continuously reviewing and whatnot. Um, and that makes it a lot easier if you're internal, of course, because you kind of see that visibility. You have one source of truth, AD or Okta or whatever it is. Um, external, you know, that's a little more difficult, truthfully. You know, we just started using some of the Fuse ones. We have some other apps. Um, it, it's sort of a manual process for our external, and, you know, that's never a great thing. But, you know, always looking for ways. Nathan? Yeah, um, at Career Builder, we actually have a, a pretty complex setup for lifecycle management. Uh, we've got a skim application with almost half a million lines of code written in .NET uh, that does a lot of our management, including letting Fuse know when we need phone numbers or when we need them removed. Um, and that's just one of two applications we have running to do all of the legwork. Um, anything that can be automated through lifecycle management, we've done. Um, whether that's even sending an email or creating a ticket for someone to go manually do something, come back, complete it, and continue the life cycle of the employee. Um, so we would love to kind of bridge that to external folks. Um, and in the gap where we can't, we're starting to shut that down for external folks um, because we are losing visibility and we're you know, not wanting to manually go do all these tasks. Well, hopefully between Fuse and Okta, we can start building some better tools. If nothing else, better visibility, but automation, obviously, is where we want to go. All right. Well, before we open this up, we just have a few minutes left. Um, just a round of applause for our panel. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, this has been a great chat uh, and uh, exactly what I wanted to do. Um, of course, you're welcome to uh, participate in the open discussion if you've got some additional points. Uh, anybody have any questions, comments? What's your experience uh, in your enterprises with um, extended teams? Oh, let me bring you the mic. Sorry. <laughs> oh, we could hear him. <laughs> I was just wondering, um, at like, do you have a dividing line within your individual companies um, where you say, okay, well, these types of contractors we're going to onboard into HR. Stop. Nah, those are going to be external guests, as you guys are. Want to start, Mason? Uh, yeah, for us, all contractors, if they're going to roll up to any subsidiary of ours, uh, are going to start with HR regardless. Um, so it's not really a concern. Interns, just the same. Uh, whether it's a month contract or more, everyone goes through HR if you're going to be paid from one of our financial systems. Um, but it's the other people, right, who come in, guest collaboration that we're losing sight of. Yeah, I would say from a, um, a contractor perspective, this is something I pushed really hard uh, with our HR and legal team is to actually make everybody go through HR. <laughs> um, we were having a lot of challenges where, you know, we're getting different people to ask for different access or somebody would be hired and I didn't have visibility to it because it was being paid through payroll, not through ADP, which is kind of what I use as our source of record to know who's employed and who's not. So pretty much I, I made the HR make a, a policy change where every person, whether it's a temporary, a contractor, you know, anybody who's coming to work for us that's going to be paid, no matter how they're paid, get put into um, ADP so that I know whether or not they're, you know, they're actually employed or not. Because I was having a really difficult time. Um, our organization doesn't have an actual full HRIS system, so I had a hard time having a source of truth, and so that's what I use. And so I started making them put everybody in there so I had a report I could, you know, look against to make sure um, as we do our QCs that these are actual active employees. But it doesn't, doesn't solve for the external um, guests, you know, where they aren't actually getting paid to do work, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think what we kind of do is uh, going along the same lines. If there's uh, contractors, you know, they have to go through HR, they have to go through those tools. But sometimes it becomes more gray, right? What happens if you have professional services 
Um, you're not going to necessarily board them the same way as a contractor. You're not going to give them equipment because they have a short-term project. How do you do that? I kind of see them almost similar to a guest, and it depends on your systems, right? So it may be that your InfoSec has already done uh, an assessment of their policies, right, to get approval over that. Um, so it, it, I guess it varies as the question. Sometimes we have to have InfoSec review the policies beforehand to make sure we can allow those connections. Um, other times it's you know, if they don't have anything, then we have to default to everyone gets, you know, goes through HR, everyone gets our equipment, et cetera. Um, and then guest is, you know, still kind of an open thing where you're collaborating freely or I would collaborate with Fuse or Okta. And, you know, how, how do I control that? Because that doesn't go through HR. So it, it kind of varies on the tools. If they need more access in, we'll have to start going through some of those more controls. Okay. Any other thoughts or questions? More questions, raise your hand and I will bring you the mic. Brilliant. Alex and Michelle, how much friction does that create with the line of business when you, you know, when you create those extra policies? I mean, you touched on it a little bit, but. If you wanna go first. <laughs> you know, we try to make it as seamless as possible. So um, we'll use some of the built-in tools, right? Like we can have DocuSign with Okta to help automate the workflow to onboard it, right? Again, it, it automates a lot of that. So I found it's not too much of a friction as long as you can meet the SLAs, right? So if it's, I need to bring them on quickly and your IT department can do that, then I, I think that's beneficial. I agree though, if you say I'm gonna need a week to onboard somebody, they're gonna go off and do their own thing. It's too late already, right? So as long as you agree to the SLAs, and everybody kind of accepts that. Um, I, I, I haven't found too much, but again, if you're gonna go off that, it's gonna cause issues. Yeah, at first it was a bit tough. Uh, because, you know, they, they had to learn a new policy and they needed to think ahead, you know, instead of just calling up IT and saying, hey, I need access for this person. It's like, nope, we can't help you. I'd love to help you, but you got to work through HR. Um, because many times they're moving so fast that they weren't even including HR in some of these things. They're working with their director that says, it's okay, go ahead and you can hire this contractor to do some marketing work or whatever it might be. So there, there was a little bit of frustration at first. Um, but I would agree with Alex, as long as you can agree to that SLA of when you would have that to them um, and that HR is, is educating them around the process, um, you know, that was a bit of a challenge for us is like, you know, we made an agreement, but then HR wasn't necessarily sharing that process change so that when we would push back to our um, customer asking for it, they would get a little frustrated. Um, so there is always going to be some conflict, but I would agree if you can come to an agreement of how quickly those things will happen and you can meet that. Um, that generally it's not an issue. And I think the other thing you'll notice is uh, HR handling attribute collection frees you up a lot. Mm -hmm. One thing I would add, you know, we've talked about self-service, and I think generally when we think about self-service, we think about the end user, but you can also think about self-service for your other, mm -hmm. like your, your business owners within your organization as well, right? Like, so if you can come up with an easy self-service solution where these people can, can get users that they want to add onboard into your Octa system, then that, that can be really helpful as well. Great, well, looks like we're just about out of time, uh, unless there's maybe one last question. Do we have one more question in the room? All Any right. takers? One more. Oh, one more. <laughs> uh, I'm just, uh, have a question built up on the guest users itself is, uh, are you, especially maybe for Fuse, how do you, manage like if uh, instead of you know going through HR or any any other uh, kind of department within the company but they want to collaborate with other companies through federation where anybody from that uh, federated company can actually have collaborative uh, you know work or projects sure uh, how do you manage that or and talk <laughs> yeah. about that so um, one the the guest feature is kind of by nature meant to be a little bit more viral, right? It's the, the end users saying, I, I need to communicate with this person. Uh, and so invites them into some groups to, um, to participate. Um, we do provide some admin tools to you know, allow or disallow guests altogether. Uh, and then we also provide those tools for the end users to say, hey, I'm, I'm done working with this person, you know, take them out of this group. Yeah, and, um, and just to kind of add to that, and, and I've got the fuses ears. <laughs> 
Um, what would be great is to add some additional administrative controls so you can um, uh, allow or disallow at a user level to have someone invite a guest. Yes. That'll be helpful too to help us control sprawl. We'll go on the roadmap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're, uh, we're out of time. Again, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a great chat. And uh, thanks to all of you. Thank you, Fuse. Thank you to our panelists.